Today I'm going to give you a tour of my Jayco Pinnacle. This is the 2021 37 MDQS and it's very similar to the North Point 377 RLBH. They're both mid bunk floor plans made on the same production line. But this is the Pinnacle version. It's a wide body and it has some slightly different finishes and decor inside. But overall very similar to the North Point. Now this is the fifth RV that I've owned and I think over the years I've become a little more particular about the features and options on RVs and probably about a year ago I started considering the prospect of changing RVs. So I spent a lot of time researching different brands and models, finally narrowed it down to about a half dozen that I started tracking very closely and I'll include a list of the runner-ups in the description below. But with the shortage of RVs on dealer lots that left me mostly watching tours and reviews here on YouTube and also reading online forums and owner groups and you know being a more particular RV consumer I had a lot of questions about different features and options across the different brands. And oftentimes I really couldn't get a solid answer to those questions, whether from salespeople or the online community. So part of the format in today's video is gonna be some of those questions that I had while researching. Now, some of those questions I was able to answer before purchasing my Pinnacle, but a lot of them I ended up answering afterward and some of those answers are a little bit too detailed to discuss in today's video so do me a favor and if you hear a question that i bring up or maybe you see a feature or option that you're interested in let me know in the comments below i figure i can't be the only one that's had these questions about the pinnacle lineup or the 37 mdqs so i'd like to use today's video kind of as an intro to a more detailed series on the Pinnacle lineup and the 37 MDQS. So if you're at all interested in the 37 MDQS or even the Pinnacle series, maybe you've got the Pinnacle series on your short list for future RVs, then definitely subscribe because I wanna make this series as helpful as possible to the community. Now I am not affiliated with Jayco, I'm just a Pinnacle customer and so I'm going to share the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'll share things that I like about it. I'll share things that I dislike. I'll even share things that I've had to fix and repair. So with that, I'll begin the tour on the outside here. And again, this is the 2021 Jayco Pinnacle 37 MDQS. I believe it was built the last month of the 2021 production cycle, right before they switched over to the 2022 model year. But not a lot has changed yet on the 2022s, at least that I'm aware of. So I've got everything opened up, all the compartments and the lights turned on. So let's jump right in. So starting with the front, you've got the nice front cap, pretty standard nowadays on most fifth wheels. They do give you this Moride upgraded pin box from the factory. And so one of the questions I had is, you know, how does this Moride pin box compare to a Reese Goose box? That's what I had on my previous fifth wheel. Is it as smooth? You know, does it get rid of the chucking and the bouncing and such? So maybe I can do a, a video outlining that in the future but let me show you here in the front compartment just take a look at all the storage you've got there and of course you see the big cummins onan generator there and let me just point out real quick there are going to be a lot of options and features you see here on my pinnacle that are not real common on units that are sitting on dealer lots and that's because my unit was a special order now without going into too much detail i had originally planned on ordering the unit myself and then waiting for it and I came across a dealer that had a customer order on a Pinnacle on this 37 MDQS and the customer had abandoned the order. They had waited too long, I guess, and weren't willing to wait any longer. And so the dealer was stuck with this unit that was custom ordered. And it just so happened that that customer picked pretty much all the options that I was planning on picking except for one the instant hot water heater and so i decided instead of waiting i would just take over this customer's order that was already in the queue and so all that to say you're going to see a lot of options on this unit and some of them i ordered from the factory and then of course some of them i added myself but one of the questions I had here on this Cummins generator is, you know, what is it like living with a built-in generator on your RV? You don't see them a lot on fifth wheels unless it's a toy hauler. What can you run off a 5,500 watt generator? How noisy is it? You know, how good is the, the fuel consumption or the propane consumption in this case? And so those are just some of the questions that I had concerning a built-in generator like this. But you'll also notice just how Jayco compartmentalized everything so nice up here in the storage. You've got your hydraulic pump there up on the top shelf and then plenty of storage off to the right. And then you've got a nice little battery bank that's kind of separate and enclosed here on the right. They even gave you a little shelf up top. So plenty of storage here in the front. 
really like the way that Jayco laid that all out with the shelves. Makes it super easy to organize. But let's move over, move over here on the driver's side and take a look at these compartments. So first up, you've got your propane storage. And one thing I really like about the Pinnacle and the North Point is that Jayco gives you these giant 40 pound propane tanks. You know, really 30 is kind of the standard to have two 30s in a fifth wheel. And so to have 40, that can be a game changer, especially if you're camping in the cold weather. So I really like that. These are gonna be for your furnace and your, your stove. And then there's a third propane tank, actually, I'll show you on the other side for the generator. But again, that was another question I had is, you know, you've got three propane tanks. I just assumed that all three were chained together, but actually it's just these two together to service your furnace and your stove. And then the third one is really just exclusively for the generator. Now, all the doors on the Pinnacle and the North Point are nice and thick, except for, I've noticed this one right here on the propane bay. And maybe it's because, you know, Jayco figured it wasn't part of the RV's envelope, the heating and cooling envelope. So there's no reason to really insulate this compartment since it's open and exposed to the elements. But, you know, I just it just feels a little cheap. When you wiggle the door, you can see how much it flexes there. Otherwise, the rest of the doors are all pretty thick and pretty dense. But let's take a look at this compartment over here. Notice just how large and wide. This is a drop frame, of course, but I mean, Jayco really put, it looks like the biggest door and opening that they could find here. They did a really nice job finishing out this whole storage space. You can see it's lined with carpet and then they even put some shelves in here, even went to the expense of adding those little mesh nets to keep your gear inside. They did a really good job. You can see the inverters up there, and then you can see that foil wrapped on the uh, subfloor from above there. So I think Jayco did a great job overall with the storage bay. And then you've got your wet bay off to the side. Up top there is gonna be your equalizer for the hydraulic leveling. And that was another question I had. You know, it seems like in RVs, it's more common to see the Lippert, the level up hydraulic or the ground control system and so I had a lot of questions about this equalizer system you know is it as good is it better how does it operate differently compared to the Lippert version so I had a lot of questions there but directly below you'll see the nice Nautilus panel and a lot of RV brands are starting to adopt this really just a really nice easy way to have one inlet for your fresh water and then one for your black tank and just simplifies all those connections with the different valves. Of course, you got the standard cable satellite hookups there and your, your spray port. And then that red light up top to the right or to the left rather of the equalizer systems panel, that is for your water pump to let you know when it's on or off. And then of course, to the right, you've got the standard solar onboard port like so many RVs have today. I love that Nautilus system, really, really nice. I had that on my previous uh, Grand Design years back and really liked it a lot. Jayco also gives you a household filtration, a water filtration cartridge there. So that's really nice that you can pick your favorite cartridge and pop it in there to filter the water for the whole coach. And then you've got the black and gray tank waste valves all inside here where it's heated and enclosed. Now, there is actually a third gray handle that's exposed to the elements, and I'll show you that one later, but they were nice enough at least to put the two in here. And they even thought through, you know, giving you a clear access with your water hose to go through here, and then even have a nice little trim piece here so you can keep little critters from crawling in by sealing that door shut. So I think Jayco did a great job here with the space, trying to make the most of it and just with the overall features. But just to the right of the storage bay, you're gonna see the furnace and the water heater stacked. And this is one of those things that I really was leaning toward getting the tankless, the instant hot water from Truman. That's the one that Jayco specs as an option. But uh, like I said, the customer that placed this order did the standard water heater. And so I decided in the end, I'll just stick with that for now. You know, something you can't upgrade later if you need to. But this one's just a standard, I think a 10 gallon, maybe a 12 gallon water heater, just a conventional unit. And then down below is your waste connection for your gray and black tanks. And while we're down here, I'll just point out that Jayco uses a 10 inch I-beam here below for the drop section, and then a 12 inch above, which is pretty beefy considering the weight and size of this RV. So I think Jayco did a great job there. And then just behind this leveling jack here is that third gray valve handle. But let's take a look back here and talk about these tires. So for those who don't know, Jayco has a real close relationship with Goodyear tires. 
and I think, I could be mistaken, but I think on all their towables, they have Goodyear tires across the board. And so it's no different here on the Pinnacle. But these are kind of unique. These are Goodyear Endurance tires, and they're actually a load range E. That's right, E is an Echo, which is kind of surprising because typically for a fifth wheel of this size and weight, you know, that has a GVWR of almost 17,000 pounds, typically you're gonna find a G-rated or H-rated tire on something like this from the factory. So, Jayco did put these Goodyear Endurance. Now, to be fair, if you look up close on the label for each individual tire, it does have a load rating of over 4,000 pounds. I think it's 4,080 if I recall. And so to be fair, it is sufficient and adequate based on the 7,000 pound axles that are on the unit. And speaking of axles, it also does have a factory installed equalizer from Moride there. But I did have a lot of questions structurally about how the tires and the equalizer and all that fits together. And so maybe I can do a more detailed video on that setup and give you some close up views because it's kind of impressive the way Jayco put all this together for the Pinnacle. But let's take a look up above here. Notice there's another hatch there and that is for the back of the refrigerator if you need access. So it's kind of nice that Jayco thought that through in case you need to maybe do some maintenance on the ice line that's feeding the refrigerator or maybe something's wrong with the refrigerator and you need to have it repaired so this way you've got a hatch you don't have to pull the whole refrigerator out makes it kind of nice and easy but looking down the back there's not a whole lot more going on back here i'll just show you real quick the storage here you've got some storage for a sewer hose right here this is also if you option it with the SantaCon system that kind of macerates your sewage this is where it would come out of as well and then to the right of that, you've got your power cord reel. Now this is something initially, I really didn't think I would appreciate so much, but I'll tell you my favorite thing about this power cord reel is that if you're camping somewhere and you don't need to take out your entire reel, your entire cord, you can leave it reeled up and just pull out what you need. And so your campsite looks a lot neater and you don't have to mess with, mess with uh, you know wrangling and wrestling the giant 50 amp cord. So I really like that a lot. And then as we hop over to the backside, let me just point out something. So the pinnacle lineup, for those who are familiar with it, it's supposed to have a molded rear fiberglass cap. And you can see mine just has a flat wall. Now, for those who have kind of kept up with the news, when Jayco started having some production issues and shortages, I think it was about, oh, maybe February of 2021, they announced that basically any customer orders that are sold. In other words, if you go to a dealer as a customer and order a Pinnacle fifth wheel, they would put, and basically, I don't know that they use the word guarantee, but they would put a fiberglass, a molded uh, rear cap on your fifth wheel. However, if a dealer orders a Pinnacle to have on their lot for someone to buy, then those units would come with just a laminated flat wall like you're seeing right here. So again, mine was a customer sold unit, even though I wasn't the customer that ordered it originally, it was a customer sold unit. And for some reason, I guess Jayco just didn't have enough supply. And so they just put a laminated wall on the back of mine. So being completely candid, I was a little disappointed because you know visually that rear cap looks pretty nice. But at the end of the day, it is just a rear cap from a you know, structural standpoint, insulation standpoint, there's really no difference between the two. It's just a visual aesthetic thing. And so, yeah, I was pretty disappointed. Uh, I think I was more disappointed that Jayco didn't really explain or say, hey, customer, we're sorry we couldn't, you know, meet the, uh, the obligation or what we promised and committed to. But uh, anyway, at the end of the day, it's just a rear cap on an RV. So it's nothing to get all disappointed about. And upset but they do give you a ladder on the rear of the rv that goes all the way up to the top easy to get to and then you'll see there also is a two inch receiver hitch in the middle there not for towing but just for something like a bike rack and coming at you from the passenger side of the back just wanted to point out that this one does have the furion rear observation camera that you can use while you're driving that is factory installed i optioned it with that and the side marker cameras but looking down the side, we're on the passenger side now looking toward the front. You'll see you get two nice big awnings and those are standard on the 37 MDQS. And I really like that you get pretty much full coverage on your entire campsite from front to back. You also notice that the 
awning arms are painted to match the body color of the fifth wheel. I really like that. I think it makes it just a, look a little bit classier. And then you see it's got, of course, the standard LED strips up there like so many RVs do nowadays. But coming down the side, you'll see they do give you a standard outdoor TV on the Pinnacle, at least on the 37 MDQS. And on the North Point, they give you an option to add it in your front storage bay. I kind of like this option better on the Pinnacle just because you don't lose that, oh, I think it was six to seven inches or so in your storage bay if you option the TV there. This is kind of nice because it's already dead space. This is basically the back of your, kind of your buffet, your hutch inside at the dinette. And so it's already dead space. So I kind of like that even if you're not gonna watch a whole lot of TV outside. And coming down the side here, moving along the front, you'll see the main entry door. There's only one single entry door on this model. And I really like that on an RV. I know sometimes you just have to have two entries based on the floor plan, but I kind of like just having one entry door. You'll notice that they do have a nice big window on it. It's like a two thirds window. Speaking of windows, they all are uh, frameless tinted except for the ones on the slide boxes. Those are just your regular tinted windows on an RV. But coming down, our first compartment that's open here is gonna be your outdoor kitchen. And I absolutely love this. You know, on a mid-bunk floor plan, a lot of times you don't get the outdoor kitchen. And that's really a feature that I absolutely love. Jacob gives you this refrigerator here, and then you've got a little pull-out compartment here. And you'll notice something is missing, the Blackstone griddle. And that's because they had supply shortages. But what I appreciate Jacob did is they kind of gave you an IOU. And basically, as soon as the vendor gets them in stock, they will be shipping them out to customers. And so eventually, I will have a Blackstone griddle there. But I love the way they fit this outdoor kitchen in here. You also do have a spray port on your wall here. One of the questions I had was, you know, thinking through an outdoor kitchen, you don't have a sink here. So, you know, what's a good way to have a hands-free water spigot that you could plug in here to your spray port? And so that'll be another video where I can describe in depth more solution that I came with for that. But let me point out also, you do have speakers on the outside, pretty common on RVs these days, but these are upgraded JBL speakers that Jayco puts in. I haven't been real impressed with the sound quality outside. I mean, to me, they sound like any other generic RV speaker on other RVs that I've owned, but these are JBL. Inside, they're also JBL, and I think inside they sound a little bit better, but not substantially different. Well, moving on to your front storage compartment, just look how wide and spacious, again, this compartment is. I mean, Jayco really tried to get the biggest, tallest door they possibly could. In fact, I've got my laser tape here, so I'll just shoot across here so you can see exactly how wide it is. So you can see here it is four feet five inches so almost four and a half feet across there just a really large opening and you can see just how much storage space that you get and again it's very well finished off i did add a little bit of lighting in here just to brighten it up i do really like how jaco gave you this access panel here now originally they had this screwed shut in the middle i just added the knobs because for me i'm in and out of here enough that it makes sense to be able to get easy access but i love that actually they trimmed it out framed it up and put that sliding wood panel in there and make it easy to service of course you've got your your road vac there where you can hook up outside and vacuum and then your two inlets inside that i'll show you later and basically you've got a nice outdoor storage compartment here really lots of space you can see i've got my zero gravity chairs in here and really no shortage of space whatsoever so we really love that extra space then moving along to the front here, you'll see that third propane tank. So again, this has three 40 pound propane tanks. So a total of 120 pounds of propane, which is a game changer. I mean, I think this is a feature that I wish more fifth wheels would incorporate because if you're camping out in the cold, really having 120 pounds of propane can make a big difference for how long that you can be out there. Again, this tank though, like I mentioned earlier, is exclusively for the generator. And so if you didn't have the generator option, but you got the gen prep, I believe they still give you this third tank. It's just basically plumb to nothing. And so if you wanted to make use of it, you'd have to just physically swap out your tanks and move them to the other side there. So that brings us full circle on the outside. And before I pull all the slides out, let me just show you what it looks like inside. 
so that you can see what kind of access you get when you're on the road with the slides pushed in. So coming in the entryway here, you've got your kitchen and family room to the left. You can see there is about, oh, probably about seven inches or so between these, the slide and the wall, but not enough for most adults to fit through. And so if we're on the road and I wanna get access to the kitchen or the refrigerator or anything in the back half, then I do have to pull this slide out Oh, about 10 inches or so to be able to get access but otherwise on the front half of the fifth wheel you do have full access including the bathroom without pulling any slides out so that's definitely a bonus and you even have access here to the master bedroom again without pulling any slides out Okay, so I've got all the slides pulled out and before we go in, I just wanted to point out on the slide mechanisms, you know, typically on a higher end fifth wheel, you're gonna have a hydraulic system for your slide boxes. And Jayco put all electric on the pinnacle, which is kind of interesting. So, you know, I kind of have mixed thoughts about that. I mean, the nice thing is that you can independently operate each slide with a, with a button. Whereas with hydraulic, a lot of times you've got valves and knobs that you got to open and close if you only want one slide open or closed. So in that sense, you have a little more accuracy and, you know, functionality, but basically they have a standard rack and pinion mechanism here on the main big slide here with your dinette on the campsite. And then the other three slides on the driver's side, you've got kind of a mixture. So your first one here is gonna be your Schwintec, which is great for these lighter, smaller slides like this bedroom one here. And then you've got another Swintech slide, and this is the one for the mid bunk. Now you'll notice I can't get it all the way open. It comes out about another, oh, probably 16 inches or so. It's pretty deep, but because of where it's in storage right now, I can't get it pulled out away all the way out, but that is a Swintech. And then this is one that I've never had on this kitchen slide before. It's a slim rack. So it's kind of similar to the Swintech, just a little different, the track design and everything, and it makes a slightly different whining sound when you open and close it. So not sure how I feel about that slim rack. You know, I think I would have preferred to see a kind of standard rack and pinion. Just seems a little heavier duty, more robust on the big kitchen slide here. But they did put that slim rack, and maybe there's a reason, an engineering reason why they had to do that but just wanted to point that out on the outside. All right, so going on for the inside tour, you've got your Moride Step Above version two on this one, so you don't have to fiddle with a little pen when you want to adjust your steps. But take a look at this amazing view that you're rewarded by as soon as you walk in. And again, this is the 37MD QS. I love how Jayco put windows all the way around. A lot of times brands will skimp on the windows on your neighbor's side over here, but you'll notice they put one directly above the TV where the televator is, and then also another one over the range. And so really windows is a big thing. When you're looking at different RVs, notice how many windows they put in all over. Well, let's start here in the front and we'll just start with the dinette. You'll notice that it is a legless dinette, kind of reminds me of a class A. You don't have any posts or anything to bump your legs into down there. And then they give you two dinette chairs and two folding chairs that you can store under your bed. And you might be looking at this first saying, wow, that's kind of a small dinette if you've got four people, but they do have this little lift up leaf that comes out and extends it about another 16 inches. So it's more than sufficient for four people. And then I went ahead and bought this bench here and finished it out to look like the rest of the wood here. This is a little more practical for us with two kids instead of dragging these you know, folding chairs out each time. This bench, you can kind of move around, you can store it between the two chairs underneath, and it's just kind of a little more flexible. So I kind of like the idea of having a bench. You can put the bench on one side, the two chairs on the other, or you can put the bench on the end just like that. I really like having this hutch back here behind the table. You can use it for things like napkins, cups, and we leave this actually in place while we're on the road and it doesn't slide at all. And again, on the back side of that is your outside TV, which would be dead space already. But notice just the lighting, even in this space. I mean, they put lights all over the place. And so it looks just really, really bright. But moving on next to the dinette, you've got the theater seating there. It is electronic. Not a big fan of that, but that's what Jayco put in here. And it does have, of course, lights and massage on it. The massage is pretty weak, but it does pulsate a little bit. And it does have a heater as well, which is kind of nice. Cup holders in the middle, and then some storage in between with USB ports on either side. 
it's kind of a some kind of synthetic man-made material when you look up close it looks like it should have a texture but it's actually completely smooth that's one thing that kind of surprised me when i first saw it in person because i was expecting it to have a texture just from what i saw in videos but again just notice the the windows how much space you have to see out on your campsite really love that and notice how Jayco also trimmed out the wall in this slide box kind of have some paneling dark paneling on the bottom third and that just again dresses it up a little makes it look a little more distinguished then come around to the back, you've got your big couch. And again, this is a wide body, 102 wide. And so you've got a real nice wide couch. It does have a bed inside. It's just a standard jackknife type sofa bed, not a dedicated mattress. And then on either side, you've got those little kind of lamp stands that do lift up and have storage inside. Another thing I'll just point out, I think Jayco did a great job of putting outlets throughout the coach. They put them in strategic places where you would, you know, logically be looking to plug something in so they didn't skimp on the outlets they did a great job there you'll notice above you've got your standard overhead storage and all those overhead storage doors have props on them to hold them up i'll just show you what those look like so that way you don't have to hold the doors up and while we're talking windows, so one option that I did on this model is the dual pane windows. And I really had a lot of questions about those before ordering and just wasn't sure if I should do it or not. You know, questions like, does it really make a difference in terms of temperature? You know, if you're camping in the cold, does it really make that big of a difference having dual pane windows? Or does it help with sound at all? You know, some people would say it's a lot quieter when you have dual pane windows. So I had a lot of questions on that and I plan to do some videos where I can give you some scientific results with at least the audio portion to let you know, hey, is it really quieter having dual pane windows and answer some of those questions in a separate video. But you'll notice all the windows have real nice valances. You can see kind of a close up of what that material looks like. It's almost like a, Kind of a faux leather material top and bottom with a nice texture on it and then all the windows are going to have your dual you know shades your night and day shades there very nice they're not mcd brand but they are a very similar one from isd from irvine shade and door i believe is their their name and again just notice all the lighting that jaco put in here just so nice and bright and while we're panning up to the ceiling you notice you got your ceiling fan pretty standard here jaco did put a 12 volt model which is first time i've had a 12 volt ceiling fan in an rv you know normally they're always 120 volt my only you know thing i've observed so far is it seems to be a little bit louder the motor you hear kind of a, a rumbling sound as it turns on compared to the you know more standard 120 volt that i've had in the past but moving on to the entertainment area, I really love how Jayco did the televator here to give you that nice big window. Really, really nice to have all that extra light coming in. And the televator's pretty quick. You know, some RVs that I've looked at, you have to hold and sit here for quite a while to get the TV to come up. But you can see this one comes up pretty quick. And I believe that's a 50 inch TV if I'm not mistaken. And then down below, they put this JBL system, kind of a little bit of an upgrade compared to the, the more common systems that you see in RVs. So that's pretty nice. And then of course you get your standard electric fireplace there for both ambience. And then it has about, a, I think a 5,000 BTU heater built inside. So that is definitely nice. But yeah, it looks really nice back here. You got some overhead storage above. And while we're looking up there, you can see they do a really detailed job here on the fascias on these slide boxes. Really intricate, lots of different crown molding and different tones. So I really like that a lot. This is, by the way, the farmhouse color scheme. They also have this in silver mist. It's more of a silver gray color where you see the farmhouse white cabinets. And this is a, uh, you know, it's kind of an off-white color. And then it has this, you know, fancy, I don't know if you consider that more glazing or what with the edges inside that kind of sets it out and really draws attention to those lines. Well, let's hop over here to the kitchen. Again, love the window above the range there. You've got a convection microwave, at least that's what came in ours. I know they're running short on a lot of things like that, so I've heard some people only get a regular microwave. You do get this nice big turkey-tested oven that everybody talks about. Really nice. 
It's probably nicer than the one that we have in our house. And then you get the giant residential refrigerator. This one's a Whirlpool, but I have seen other brands and different pinnacles. Then moving along to the kitchen island here, you'll see they did a really good job of making the island as big as possible and even kind of taking that counter and letting it overhang a good bit and giving kind of the illusion that it's bigger than it really is. So that's really nice. And then if you've seen any of the Pinnacle or North Point videos before online, you know that this pulls out and you can put a butcher block in there for extra counter space. So that's really clever. You can store that butcher block under your, your bed in the front there or in the bunk area, the loft area up top. Moving on to the other side of the island, you can see below they do give you lots of cabinets, a different variety. You've got some that pull out like this one here for your trash can. And then you've got other ones that open just like a traditional cabinet. Now you'll see here I did add a dishwasher, the Pinnacle and North Point. Most of them are dishwasher prepped. And so another question that I had researching was, well, what does that prep really include? And how much are you going to have to do on the uh, you know, modifications in order to actually fit a dishwasher in your unit? What are some of the benefits of having a dishwasher in a fifth wheel? And so I'll try to do another video on that as well. But above the dishwasher, this one that I put in is a Fisher Paykel. Really like it a lot, super handy. Above that is gonna be your farmhouse sink, just a single basin, nice and wide there, kind of an apron front style. And then you've got chrome fixtures there. And of course you've got Jayco's filtered water spigot. I think they have a patent pending on that. Basically it's a five gallon jug that goes in your front storage bay and then a separate water pump. So you actually have two water pumps on this coach. And the second one feeds exclusively from that five gallon tank to your filtered water spigot and also over to the ice line that's connected to the refrigerator. Now I had a lot of questions on that feature because I read online, you know, it sounds like a really cool idea, but I read online a lot of owners complained that the pump that serves the filtered water was very noisy and kind of a nuisance more or less. So I have had to do quite a few modifications on that pump in the way it was plumbed to make it more quiet and more reasonable when you turn it on. But I've also figured out a few things that I'll share in a separate video for the filtered water system there. All right, you'll notice they put lots of outlets. That's gonna be your switch for the filtered water system. You do have the power tower, of course, on the island. And I'll give you one more look back at the kitchen so you can see the cabinets below. Uh, one thing I'll just point out in a lot of the drawers, Jayco did kind of a drawer within a drawer, which is really clever, I think, and just nice that you can see you kind of have your main drawer and then another drawer inside of it. Really nice that they did that. And then same thing up here as well for your silverware. So I really like that Jayco went the extra mile on that. And then most of the drawers are gonna be soft clothes. For the most part, you do have to kind of give them a little bit of a push. And when you get them weighted down, they don't work quite as well, but they are supposed to be soft clothes anyway. Of course, you've got your solid surface countertops. And then while we're kind of coming around to these light switches, I'll just mention real quick, you're gonna see a lot of these throughout the coach and I'll touch briefly on it, but it's basically all connected to the J command by BM Pro. And BM Pro is an Australian company as far as I know. They uh, have done a lot of this on camper vans and a lot on the Australian market. And then Jayco has started bringing them over in the US and I really like this system overall. They put these little remotes, they're not hardwired, they're just battery operated remotes. And then they're labeled with different lights and sometimes maybe a pump or a slide that you can turn on or off. And you'll notice they really thought through strategically where they put those different switches. And I'll try to point them out throughout, but there's one there in the kitchen. And then there's also one here when you're sitting down in the theater seating. And just take a look at what you can turn on and off on those switches. I mean, it really, someone thought through logically, what are you gonna want to turn on and off when you're sitting down in that chair? So I really like that a lot. But to be clear, there are some lights still in this pinnacle that are manually operated with switches. And I think they just ran out of, of uh, switches perhaps on the, on the node, the control module. All right, and I'll just point out the pantry over here on the North Point 377 RLBH. The pantry kind of divides the entertainment and kitchen area. Whereas on the pinnacle, they slid the pantry over here uh, off to the side. And I kind of like that personally, it looks a little more open. This is a very deep pantry, so you got plenty of space. It goes back probably about 30 inches in there. And you've got two drawers 
top and bottom and then down below is your converter charger now, i had a lot of questions about that such as you know what brand did they use typically in the pinnacles they use the one from progressive dynamics but also questions like you know how easy is it to convert from the lead acid that comes standard with just about every rv to lithium you know am i gonna have to replace the entire converter charger or is there a way to you know flip a switch and you know i'll give you a quick spoiler alert on the progressive dynamic system there is a switch thankfully and so you don't have to replace all that you can just flip the switch you do get that clock up there and i'll point out one more thing up here on the ceiling you can see you've got an ac shroud over there but then you also have whisper quiet return ducts there and so i optioned this with a third ac and the reason is you know we live in the south and a lot of times we go camping in in uh, florida and places where it's really hot and humid and you get a big fifth wheel with this with the you know ceilings and all the the windows and everything and there's just a lot of of heat load and so having that third ac is really nice so you can crank it up and really you know dry it out cool it down in your fifth wheel the third ac option jaco just puts a standard ac shroud it's just the coleman mock system whereas the first and second acs they give you the whisper quiet return ducting and so i had a lot of questions about that too because uh, i've never had a fifth wheel with whisper quiet ducting before i've just had the standard ac shroud so questions like you know how much quieter is the whisper quiet ducting system and so i'll try to do some some breakout videos on that but then also with this third ac option you know does the third ac work on 50 amp service in other words can you turn all three acs on at the same time and believe it or not i got a lot of different answers from salespeople and within the online community so i'll try to clarify all that in some other videos but basically this is going to be the whole front half of the fifth wheel and i'll just pan around again real slow so you can see all the detail with the trim they really did a nice job. Now, before I show you the back half, let me show you this awesome mid bunk room that gives it its namesake. So it's accessible directly here off the kitchen. It is a solid closing door. The glass is opaque. And again, the slide, I can't put it all the way out, but it goes out probably another 16 inches or so. But check out how nice this is. You get this nice love seat in here. It's a little bigger than a twin, not quite as big as a full. It does fold out into a jackknife sofa. Got a nice big window above it and then some cabinet storage up above there. Now in the North Point version, you're gonna have actually a bunk on that upper half and no storage. Where in the Pinnacle, they just give you the cabinets up above. So we kind of like that for us. Having that bunk up there is not real practical for sleeping kids. And so it just gives you a little extra storage and looks a little bit cleaner. Then on the opposite side, I really like this here. They gave you this nice desk space. And the only thing I had to do was convert the drawer out here to a keyboard style tray where you can flip down the front and that way you can have a nice keyboard mouse set up and get your work done i really like this a lot because it enables me to be a lot more productive when we're on the road and then you've got a nice big monitor up top there and notice again just the lighting even in this small bunk room they put a little led strip there under the cabinets kind of some you know under cabinet lighting and then lots of pups on the ceiling you get more storage up above and then you've got a door here this is not hanging storage it's just more shelves and then i also like they got some more drawers but check this out they actually built a box this would normally be dead space in your basement storage but they actually built a box and gave you two more drawers it's a really nice use of space there and then if i was to pull the slide all the way out you would notice on the floor two kind of black circle mounts and they actually give you a small table you know it's maybe 16 by 30 inches that you can mount if you want and put in front of the couch there so pretty nice overall and then if you're wondering what this space is over off to the right this is basically the pantry that's on the other side of this wall so you don't really have any access to that but they they trimmed it out very nicely and i'll just point out head height in the mid bunk is sufficient i'm 6'3 probably about 6'4 with this hat on and i'm just barely brushing up against the roof so i think they got the right balance you know giving you some head height below but then enough space in the loft above however i do have to be careful 
going through this door over here. I've hit my head on that many times because it sits about, you can see almost three inches lower than the ceiling here. So that door is probably about six foot. So let's start moving back to the back and I'll just point out on these steps down here, you've got your inlets for the sweeper, for the dustpan, and then also for your central vac. You also do have that little shoe caddy. And then one thing I really like is Jayco actually gives you a coat closet when you walk in. You know, a lot of RVs don't think about that or don't give you uh, space provision for that. So you do have a coat closet when you walk in, you can put shoes in there. I did add a shelf on the top there, but otherwise that's exactly how Jayco builds it. And then before we go to the, the back, I'll just show you real quick here, your control panel. I had a lot of questions on this. This is the, again, the BM Pro system. And you know, the feedback that I heard online was kind of mixed. You know, some people seem to like it, but a lot of people complained about it. Uh, complained about disconnecting or just little glitches here and there. But basically it's replacing your traditional control panel. And you can see here, you've got a home screen. Then you've got things for your tanks, your water pump, you've got your leveling and your motors. And then you've got your climate, all your different zones there. And then of course, all your lighting switches as well. You've got sensors for your tire pressure, temp remote temperature sensors, your propane tanks. And then the last one's gonna be for your generator and your battery. And if you had a toy hauler and had fuel, it would also show up there. So again, this is basically like an Android tablet and I'll try to do some more in-depth videos and explain, you know, really how this system works. But what I really like about the BM Pro system is that they have these dedicated buttons below here. So if this tablet portion fails or you just don't like touching the buttons on it, you can come down here and use these left and right arrows to display which slide you wanna open and close. So S is slide and then you You've got a number four, so slide four, slide three, two, one, so forth. Then you've got awning two, awning one, and so forth. And then use these extend and retract buttons on those particular ones instead of having to use the screen. So I really like that. Of course, you got your water pump and then some light presets over here inside, outside, and all your lights. And then just above the BM Pro system is going to be a solar controller from Go Power. So I did opt for the solar panel on the roof just a single one i think it's 190 watts all from go power really like go power a lot they seem to really stand behind their products but this is just kind of nice you know if you have a residential refrigerator and you're on the road just to have something that adds a little bit to your battery bank while you're on the road and coming down the side you're gonna have two temperature sensors your 12 volt ceiling fan in the family room and then this is going to be your xantrex inverter it's really more of a display these buttons really don't do a lot because the unit's always gonna be on. They kind of programmed it so that uh, just for operator error, I think that you know bumping this power button does nothing. You can just kind of scroll through and see some different settings there. And then I will point out as we go up, there's a motion light there on the step, and that is where your ladder is at the top of the steps to go up to the loft area. Now some mid bunks have a physical staircase, and that is definitely nice. Uh, my children have not had issues going up and down this ladder. We were a little bit concerned, you know, in the middle of the night, what that would look like if they needed to go to the bathroom, but hasn't proven to be a problem yet. And the bonus is then you get a little more storage below in the mid bunk. But let me hop up here and just show you what that loft space looks like. You know, a lot of questions I had looking at mid bunks were, you know, you see things online and you really don't get a sense sometimes for scale. You know, how much space you have, head height here for your kids when they're sleeping. And, you know, surprisingly, some of the mid bunks that I looked at, they looked good on video and then you get in person and the head height here was so small. I mean, I could barely fit up there, let alone, you know, kids. And so just some things to think through, you know, maybe I can do another video on considerations for mid bunk floor plans and just things to look through. You know, Jayco has a vaulted ceiling and I'll just take my laser tape real quick here. So you've got just over two feet of ceiling height in the loft air up there, which is adequate. And it's a nice balance because, you know, ultimately they're balancing how much head height below in the mid bunk room and then how much space above. And you kind of have to find that happy balance there. So I think Jayco made the right decision, but notice how nice it's trimmed out up here. You've got some storage compartments, again, outlets where you need them. 
They even put the little mesh netting on those storage cubbies. And then you've got a nice window. Again, windows throughout the coach really helps brighten it up. And then you've got a vent up there, just a standard hatch. You got AC ducts, and then of course it's wired for a TV. And this is one of those manual light switches that I was talking about. But in the hallway, I'll just point out one more thing. You've got this beautiful window. Uh, again, it's you know something that they could have skipped, but they put this nice big window and it really just helps it look brighter during the daytime especially. Let's hop on over here to the bathroom and I'll show you real quick what that looks like. So really nice vanity cabinet there and mirror above, medicine cabinet, and nice and bright throughout. And this is gonna be the farmhouse decor in the bathroom. You got a single storage compartment there and then an outlet, solid sur surface uh, countertops again. And again, notice the lighting. I mean, you've got this nice LED light that kind of surrounds just below the solid surface between the sink bowl really just makes it look nice in here and then you've got kind of a weird tile pattern on the back here i'm not sure i like that a whole lot but you know i think they had to do that because of the way this wall kind of arcs and curves around it, it was easy to do kind of this mosaic tile there but otherwise it's pretty standard bathroom i think the one thing that really stands out to me in the bathroom is this shower i mean check out how nice this shower looks it is still a uh, three p or a one piece three sided wall enclosure on the shower wall, and then you've got a fiberglass base down there. But it looks really nice. I mean, it looks like individual tiles, just very natural looking. So I think this is probably one of the nicest showers that I've ever seen in a in a fifth wheel a production base fifth wheel. You got the teak bench, of course, that folds up and down. And this is not, it's some kind of composite material. It's not real teak. So that's nice. You don't have to worry about it, it molding or mildewing. And then you've got a pretty standard shower head over there to the right. Nothing too fancy about that. And then they give you little places, nooks and uh, cubbies for shower stuff. I also like how they gave you this kind of countertop again, this solid surface in the shower to put more things. All the hooks and everything you see are included from Jayco. And then instead of having a cabinet over the toilet, they've got kind of this shelf with some more hooks. And you've got your porcelain toilet, no surprise there. I did add a bidet to it. So if you're wondering what this is over here, that's just a bidet and it is plumbed with a thermostatic valve. So you've got a nice warm temperature on that bidet and I'll probably try to do another video on you know what are the benefits of having a bidet in your RV as far as you lose uh, use less toilet paper and it's just a nice experience overall so I'll try to do another video on that but very nice bathroom it does have a pocket door on it and then of course you've got your fantastic vent uh, max air vent in this case up top also point out with the shower the glass is kind of unique it's a frameless glass so it looks really high end and there is actually a little piece of glass that slides across here as a door basically on the lower section. So it's not going to cover all the way up, but it's going to keep most of the splashes from getting out there in the bathroom. So very nice. And then just outside of the bathroom, again, it's got the pocket door. You're looking back here into the bedroom and it does have a solid door, not a barn door, but a nice solid door that you can close. Same as the one in the mid bunk. It's got the glass, but it is opaque. And take a look at this bedroom. This is probably one of my favorite bedrooms that I've ever seen in a fifth wheel. I love the dark and light contrasting tones with the wood and the wall and the valances. Uh, just really stunning very nice looking bedroom here and then of course the mirrors just make it look and feel bigger than it really is but just absolutely love the bedroom so let me point out just a few more details you've got these remote switches on the wall again that's going to be a temperature sensor for the ac here in the bedroom but then over here you've got little nightstands tucked away and at first i thought i might bump my head into this while i'm sleeping but i've not had that problem it's kind of nice tucked out of the way here you know the alternative would be have a shelf that comes out on the slide that might be a little flimsy so i kind of like that and of course it's got the cup holder but notice how they gave you another switch thinking while you're in bed you might want to turn off some lights there you can even turn on all the exterior lights if you're concerned you hear a loud noise outside so really really nice the way they thought that through then you've got a little bit of a headboard back here 
real clean and simple. And I absolutely love how they gave you this window, kind of like a stargazer window above your bed. Really nice, really completes the picture here. And another thing on the lighting I'll just point out real quick that's really cool is on all these remotes, you can actually dim pretty much all the lights. So for instance, this reading light here, this is gonna control the reading lights on the bed. And so if I push and hold that, the lights are actually gonna dim there. You can see them getting dimmer. And that's really a nice feature, I think, to be able to dim and brighten your lights there. And this is a residential king size bed, so nothing proprietary about the size, just regular residential sheets work on it. Really like that. And of course, like any bed, it's gonna lift up and give you storage underneath. It's where I keep the folding chairs, or one of them at least, some of the vacuum stuff, cutting board, is on gas props. And then you'll notice those nice mirrors there for the closet. And I'll open those up here in just a minute. But before I do, I'll just show you what that dresser looks like to the front. It's got four drawers on it and then a lid that opens up on top there for some hidden storage. You've got a very strong spring on that. And then just above that dresser, you've got a nice big window and then your TV kind of cabinets off to the side there. Really nice the way they lay that out. The TV is kind of tilted, angled just a little bit. And then you've got those doors kind of framing it off on either side. So let's take a look at this closet. This is a really large closet, especially for a, a front bedroom unit. This is the first front bedroom fifth wheel that I've owned. And the closet in here is just massive. I mean, way more space than we need. You know, we don't full time live in this. So plenty of space, but you'll notice I did fit a washer dryer combo, not just anyone, but an LG. So that'll be another video, you know, talking about what are some of the challenges and obstacles of putting a washer dryer in your fifth wheel? Because almost every fifth wheel and a lot of travel trailers, Nowadays we'll advertise washer dryer prep, but they don't really tell you all the things involved into actually fitting practically a washer dryer in the unit. So I'll talk about some of the challenges I had and things I had to do differently to make it work at the end of the day, but I can show you it does fit. This is a ventless style, so there's no vent to the outside. It's just a personal preference. But take a look at all the shelvings in, in here. You've got motion lighting, of course, up here that's gonna come on. You've got hanging clothes space, and then you've got shelving. And I also like how they put this little laundry cabinet here that kind of folds down, and then you can put clothes in there. And then even behind this folding or hanging uh, clothes space, you've got more shelves behind there, and then it's cedar lined in the back. So they really did a great job of giving you a nice big closet and taking advantage of you know as much space as possible in that front cap enclosure there. Now, before we leave the bedroom, let me point out two more things on the ceiling here. You've got the Wine Guard Connect 2.0. It's the 4G unit. And so what that means basically is you can put a SIM card and it goes inside this kind of like a router more or less. And then you can subscribe either prepaid or have a monthly contract with Verizon, you know, AT&T, T-Mobile. And then you can get 4G service, which is distributed in your coach's Wi-Fi. So you get basically kind of a broadband connection on the go. So I had a lot of questions about this. In my previous RV, I had a WeBoost uh, cell booster antenna on the outside that then would kind of reproduce and bring the 4G signal inside to your cell phone. And that was just almost vital to have when you're camping in remote places to have a good cell signal to get work done. So I had a lot of questions about the WineGuard system. You know, this is not gonna boost your existing cell phone. This is a separate system altogether. But a lot of people said, hey, the, the signal that this pulls in, the 4G signal, the antenna that's inside of it is a lot stronger than your cell phone's antenna. And so, you know, you might be camping somewhere on your cell phone, you've got three bars, but on the WineGuard system, you've got five bars because it's a much better antenna. So I'll try to do another breakout video on that and talk about what I found to be the case there and just the pros and cons of using the WineGuard system and having a prepaid plan as opposed to, you know, using your cell phone as a hotspot. But it is nice that Jacob puts that in. I believe it's standard on the Pinnacle and the North Point, and they even give you 
an on off switch. And of course it also doubles as a Wi-Fi extender. So if you're at your campsite and you don't wanna to have to reconnect all your devices, maybe you've got a smart TV or something else, and you don't want to connect everything to the campground's Wi-Fi, you can just do the WineGuard system to the Wi-Fi in your campground and then it'll reproduce that Wi-Fi signal in the coach. And then of course you've got the Whisper Quiet ducks there, the return ducks here also in the bedroom. And so that's nice to make it a little bit quieter. Although I will say you still hear that fan and compressor kick on pretty, pretty good. Well, that concludes my tour and review, but do me a favor and let me know in the comments below if you have any questions, whether I asked them already or not. And that'll kind of help me gauge the interest level and determine the order for some of the other videos in this series. I really want to make it a helpful resource to the community, both to those interested in the Pinnacle series, but also perhaps those interested in similar floor plans. So thanks in advance for your feedback below.